all right uh, we are going to start with the cloud lecture series so uh, normally uh, when you discuss about cloud right uh, everyone knows that uh, it's nothing new cloud is uh, everywhere right uh, if you talk about uh, Google, Google is in the cloud, Facebook is in the cloud. So all these things that we see in everyday life, uh, especially this uh, internet related things, uh, they are now in the cloud. So of course it's nothing new. So we try to understand how this concept came into being. Uh, is it that important? Uh, so why everybody is now talking about cloud uh, if it is not new so why suddenly does everybody's talking about this cloud and cloud right uh, so so we will try to see like what had happened in the uh, the past right so there were days uh, so the, all these stories starts from 50s 60s right uh, onwards so uh, there were days where uh, people use standalone computers or these mainframe computers to do their tasks especially scientific or science science related tasks mostly at least at the initial stage then uh, it got converted to business related tasks right uh, so uh, businesses really wanted to do their business operations uh, like uh, word processing and all these things in the computer so then then uh, there were more applications came on the uh, same line so uh, so when, when, when there's a sudden growth of this uh, usage of computers uh, scientists scientists realized scientists realized uh, scientists realized that uh, okay we, we have to provide more additional services value addition services so that's the uh, that's where they realize uh, um, connecting devices right so connecting devices would give definite advantage for this business related applications right again of course there are scientific related scientific applications also but uh, right so uh, so network came into being and then uh, you did use these networks right uh, to do uh, many different activities like uh, you shared files like file sharing so that was officially was there like FTP and all these things Gopher I can remember uh, and also messaging so like uh, Facebook messenger WhatsApp messenger those days also you had messages or messengers or messaging right so um, we were there, right? you know. So you had the uh, IR, CIPD, like so. Uh, these applications are there. So there, and also printer sharing. So so many, so many things are there. And only nine eighties, uh, end of eighties only you get HTTP, you know, this uh, HTML stuff, you know. So for all these years, uh, this service has been grown, right? Uh, so a lot of people get used out of it also, right? And when uh, HTTP came, the internet, the so-called WW Worldwide Web came, uh, this exploded, you know, this got exploded. But before that, this networking was there. Right, so, so if networking was there, the internet was, the so-called internet was there, uh, web was there, the worldwide web was there. So, so what is cloud? So isn't it the same thing or something different? Yeah, so that's what we try to answer in this lecture initially, uh, but give you a very short answer. Yes, all these things would be cloud-based services, right? When there's a network, so that's remote, you have a cloud, right? But right now, you know, because all these things are there, the internet, the blockchain, and everything is there, people uh, try to uh, more, uh, give a more specific sounding to the cloud technology so that's what's happening right now so in a nutshell in today's world uh, somebody asked what is this cloud technology 
basically uh, it's about you run your uh, services or you 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 uh, put your services your processing files your storage your whatsoever into a remote location right so remote server where you are not really worried about this uh, up and running of these services so you give that full responsibility uh, to somebody else so that's where AWS comes in Azure comes in Oracle comes in so all these guys or Rackspace comes in uh, DigitalOcean comes in and uh, so those are the major providers uh, they do worry about our servers our file systems and our applications our software so all these things can be now migrated uh, into the so-called remote locations and that is uh, for, that is essentially the cloud right but try to understand it didn't happen in a day so that that you know step by step uh, migration uh, happened you know over the years you know step by step migration happened so that's why you know uh, the lecture was named as journey to the cloud so it's a journey you know it's not a single step it's a journey you know step by step move to the cloud all right so um, so we'll try to understand uh, what are the drivers for cloud computing so if there's no business driver, if people don't request it or the businesses doesn't request it, uh, there won't be this amount of growth for cloud computing. And also we give a definition for cloud computing and we'll try to see how, what do you mean by this cloud infrastructure and uh, we discuss something called CDC, classic data center, and then we talk about the cloud, right? The cloud. Okay, that's what we are supposed to cover in this particular session right so why cloud computing right so uh, why cloud computing okay so there are so many reasons why cloud computing so we look at uh, these ones uh, at this side right so basically uh, IT right, information technology had become something important in your organization so given organization uh, the core of uh, their information systems or a core of their systems whatever they run would be IT right uh, so there are only few other companies who doesn't uh, run IT at the same level of importance so we do see day in day out IT uh, is one of the core components or like the core of any given organization think about a small shop somewhere down uh, in a remote location uh, you see say it's a small business buying and selling business they do their business surrounding a small compute right they keep all these things in the compute and they do use facebook they do all these things you know? so it is like the core and uh, so this is nothing to discuss about so you know that uh, but uh, over the years so this is nothing new right the last 10 years probably uh, this problem uh, happened you know one thing is globalization one challenge because things uh, grow so fast right uh, we are living in a globalized world where everybody is requesting our services it's not only a particular small domain now or a geographic area so with all these uh, new things coming in called globalization we have a problem of managing our own uh, services and uh, probably uh, yeah our own IT services right so that's one of the reasons uh, why we can uh, probably a bit uh, outsource some of the activities that we do day in day out right and another thing is aging data centers right so running a data center itself is a cost a huge cost at a time think about you have to set up your environment right so that is like the physical environment uh, so maybe it's a building uh, think about running a data center okay that's what i'm saying here so uh, you have to have a building and then you have to have a location particular location where it's having ac what you call as hvac 
right ac and ventilation and heat control right so all these things should be there and you have to make sure that you have physical security there are no one else should be able to come right so that should be available and then you have to have power sometimes uh, power you have to have backup power lines also you have to have big generator maintaining it then you have to order your computers you have to set it up in a way where you use the standard so that's uh, server room standards tia uh, 492 as i can remember so so all these things are there so to run a, a, a server room can be quite a difficult task say now uh, like two three years back you set it up now say it's aging right so uh, there are this set of applications uh, there in the marketplace uh, where they require they ask for more resources more memory more processing power more gpus see it's, it's a terrible thing to manage it by your own so you're not living in the same world when you get up in the next day so uh, requirement had been changed so how do you manage this aging so uh, as a human you live for 50 60 70 80 90 years so you have some time you assume that you have some time but for a data center so it's so hard for you to <laughs> decide on like how long you can stay with these devices so uh, day in day out this is getting difficult right this is getting difficult meaning like the timeline would be much shorter cut short right so that's one of the other reasons why we can give the whole problem of this problem all right this problem uh, to the cloud so cloud will handle it for us why do you have to worry about it so do we have to have a location? No. Do you have to have AC? No. Do you have ventilation? No. Do you have to rent the place? Do you have to buy the place? No. You have to have physical security? No. You don't have to buy the computers? No. You have to order the computers? Sometimes ordering might take three to four to five months. Right? This is not such sometimes. So some of the times a country like Sri Lanka, if you order 50 computers, you have to wait until it get manufactured in China and get, you know, transported to Sri Lanka. Probably take four months. So... <laughs> So these are the practical issues. So, but now again with Corona and all that, who knows when you're going to get your devices, right? So see, these are the problems. But if you go to the cloud, if you go to AWS, if you get one computer, click, 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 you got it. Get 100 computers, click, 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 you get it. Same number of clicks, just another from to say 800 computers. See, that's the value of the cloud because you are not carrying that you know, so I'm going to jump into this a bit, cost of ownership. So to manage all these things, it's an ownership. So that's always a cost. Think about the land, think about the building, think about managing the safety of it, due care, due diligence, all these things come in as a huge ownership. Think about the AC, you have to manage the AC, maintain the AC. Um, there are so many security measures to be taken, then you know, to implement standard, if you I do a structured cabling on the server room then you have to worry about that as well then you have to get a standard or show that you have managing it right that's a lot of work but if you go to aws aws now have the specialty expertise to do this and they will do it for us so that's uh, how we try to address this challenge right try to address this challenge and storage growth right so today you, you needed only um, a server which can handle one or hundred tb of data that's a lot right but what if the next month you need to handle hundred thousand tb of data so how do you scale your infrastructure can you scale your infrastructure mm, it's very difficult it's really difficult okay that's where you need right cloud services so if you go to aws getting 100 computers thousand computers mm, not a problem there can be small issues but still they are open like that's that's what the cloud is for i see in case if the aws says no you can go to google or so you can go to google clouds or you can go to oracle cloud you can go to azure cloud microsoft cloud you can go to you know, the service providers and also application explosion things are you know so what are the new things that's happening so there's so much of new things video is overwhelmingly 
you know popular yeah? video is the thing now right so a lot of videos are created every second uh, I think I have read somewhere the amount of video created per minute right uh, only in YouTube it might take a lifetime to watch a human lifetime probably few of them so like see see there's so much of content created TikTok and all these other things you know so applications are explore, exploring you know so how do you manage all this that's a big of a problem right and acquisitions so this is like you know when you plan to go and buy another company so this is where another problem comes in how do you how do you uh, amalgamate all these technologies together you know, sometimes it can be hard because you're talking about legacy systems different type of systems you have a lot of mis uh, matches you know um, so that's where a cloud can be a good solution all right so now we'll try to read why this cloud can be now you understand the purpose of this slide is to understand there are so much of challenges in IT right now even right now and these challenges can be overcome using cloud computing right so this you have to understand right so but remember if you don't have much of these challenges you don't have to say ah oh, cloud come to me no you don't have to say nice right? so you can say cloud be there be there wherever you are i'm fine when i need you i'll go there right or you can come to me so whatever right so 70 percent of the budget to keep it running 30 percent available to create new value all right, this is the thing, right? So uh, you have only 30% of the budget to invent or create something value addition. 70% of the budget say what you have is wasted to run the IT. What if, if you can get those 70% decrease to a amount of 30% or 70% for creating new value. So this is what cloud promises right so when you do handle it in this way the roi would be return on investment would be much bigger much higher all right <laughs> next one weeks of planning justification deployment then we are stuck in for five years <laughs> sometimes uh, sometimes uh, uh, even though it's a five years uh, this is really long even say sometimes you're stuck in for one year also can be a problem right now right you start for one year that's kind of questionable so when you locked in for your server room you know that you can't invent or you can't uh, scale yourself and this doesn't be a problem when you have cloud so cloud handles it for you uh, you want more gpus they will give it to you you want more memory they will give it to you so that's how it works all right so most of our legacy applications are stable and predictable All right so now if that the case right we need to incrementally improve the efficiency right so see um, you you are not supposed to uh, you know do random or quick changes everything should be thought after so cloud provides you that opportunity right and also when the new things coming in so you have to use the cloud compute all right Cloud computing, so there are definitions, plenty to find in the internet. So there's one uh, given from NIST. So always uh, we should be comfortable to go with this definition because this is National Institute of Standards in USA. I don't know whether people trust USA anymore with the corona case, but still, I do think you know these uh, organizations are well thought after organizations, right? And uh, so we go for a more uh legacy type of uh, um, definition by john mccarthy uh computing may someday be organized as a public utility right just as electricity as organized as a public utility. yeah so that's that's what happened no so you do not generate electricity here at your home i don't know whether we are going at it with solar cells but still even though we have solar cells, I think it going to be a distribution system, you know, you're going to add that to the distribution network. So, so I don't think we are going back to this, that, those days where, you know, everything is isolated. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether we are going for isolation, you know, uh, with Corona case. 
maybe, but still um, there should be a mechanism not to get isolated at the same time having a more secure way of distributing, right? Isolation is good in a, in a more theoretical sense, but in a practical sense, it's difficult, right? Sharing is caring, so we have to share, right? So, so that's why cloud is also becoming a public good. All right, so it's everywhere. That's that's the idea, right? So of course there's a private uh, or a small secure section of it, but mostly it's public level. The internet is public, right? Road system is public. Uh, uh, yeah. So of course parts of it can be owned by people, owned by companies. But I think you got the point. It's not uh, one unit owned by one guy. Right? It doesn't happen that way. All right. So a model for the, now the NIST definition: model for enabling ubiquitous or ubiquitous convenient on demand. So these words mean a lot of things, right? It's convenient on demand, shared pool of configurable. Ah, that's very important. Shared pool. That's good for the world. I do believe so. Like ride sharing with Uber shared that's i think something good about sharing caring right so think about the server in aws at this particular moment i request that server and i'm getting that service but another one hour's time i'm dead so I'm, i don't i'm not going to use it right so mm, now there comes the other bugger who really wants to use that service right uh, okay so now what happens, the same memory, same server space, same processing power, same everything is now being shared to that other bugger, which is used by me, right? So is it good? Do I, do I have to be upset? I don't think so. Because just think from a very theoretical, not very theoretical, very high level perspective, you build a server, to build a server, you cut trees, you take resources from the world, Right, you dig in a lot of things from minerals from the world. So now you are just using it for your own, right? Is it good? No, I think it's bad, you know. So more things that you can share, then I think overall is good for the humanity and nature and for the mother world. So that's probably something good about cloud company. There are counter arguments also. I'm not going to talk about too much about it, but still sharing is there right so shareable pool is there right okay so it can be you can share a lot of things server space storage space networking application services all these things can be shared and that can be rapid rapidly provisioned the provision means like deployed installed right right and minimal management effort so we will have a msp managed service provision or managed service providing interface right so that interface, like you have seen the AWS interface, for, through that you can do all these things. So you have a very convenient way of doing all these things. All right, so then, uh, so these are the definitions. Now we have characteristics for cloud computing, on-demand self-service. Uh, all right, so you understand that on-demand, if you request, you get it, right? And self-service, like when you go to this, some of those canteen self-service, you go and get it, I'm not going to serve you. No service fee as well. So which is good. Right? So mm, there's a nice MSP or uh, this interface. Uh, you go and click, click, click. Right? It's common sense most of the time, right? So it's common sense. Uh, you go and get it, right? Uh, and then uh, the next one, broad network access. So this is something very essential about cloud, right? If you don't have broad network access, uh, running VMs in the cloud or uh, in a remote location cannot be a possibility. And the recent past, probably last 10, 15 years, cloud was a more popular element because you had fiber and all the other proper uh, networking concepts, right? Mm, in, in used, you know, so related to MPLS, MPLS to SD, SD WAN, you know, all this new technology is coming in. Network is becoming super fast. Now 5G is coming or 4G. I don't know, some people say 5G is related to Corona. I don't know, <laughs> right? So, but somehow these things are improving. Um, okay, so it's 
kind of interesting, right? So because of this broad network access, gigabits coming in, so uh, or even terabits coming in, so you can, uh, why the hell you have to use, uh, why the hell you have to use your own computer? There, there are many computers in the cloud, right? And can you remember that joke, like, you know, you can see the clouds in the sky because the nature is getting recovered. <laughs> all right, so probably have seen. So the clouds are already visible because of broad network access. And then resource pooling, this is essential. So if you don't do resource pooling, cloud is sort of bogus, right? I mean, you can't earn money from the cloud. There's no shared services, no pooling. Because that's how AWS earns a lot of money. That's how Azure earns money because pooling is there, right? So right now we are using and you are dead tomorrow. The other bug is using it. So that's the logic. Uh, so I'm using it. I don't use it right now. So I'm going to shut down my machines. So then other buggers can use it. Right. And then uh, rapid elasticity. So this is cool, really cool. That is jumping from hundreds computers or 10 computers to thousand computers within a minute probably seconds I don't know right so but just assume you are running a project at your office with 10 computers now suddenly the client comes and says I need thousand computers can you do it can you guys do it it can be a horrible thing you know it's difficult to do so that's where you need cloud and also a cool bit of things measured service what is that See, use it, you have to pay for it. Use it, pay for it. Use it, pay for it. If you don't use it, you don't have to pay for it. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. It's not recurrent in that sense. $10 per month. No, it's not that. If you use it, you have to pay for it. That's that's logical, right? If you don't use it, uh, you buy a computer. Even you use it or not, you have to pay for it, right? But this is good in that sense. Uh, you. That's where ride sharing worked. You don't have to own the vehicle. You don't have to own the stupid vehicle. Whereas uh, you rent the vehicle and then you use it, right? So that's the same logic for Airbnb. You don't have to stu to buy the stupid uh, house. You know, you rent this house. All right, that's how it works. It's measured service, right? So a lot of people don't buy cars even these days. See, there are pooled resources. You know, pooled resources. Billionaires do that. There are billionaire clubs. There are the there are million dollar vehicles in a pool. You use one for one week and you let the bugger go, then use the other one. So it seems like you own 10 cars. Why the hell you have to own 10 cars? It's a cost of ownership. So it's stupid. All right. So now uh, this is a very important thing, right? Um, this is how it all grew, right? Um, try to understand the concept behind. All right, so basically you all have to start with physical infrastructure. You have to have a server room, you have to have your servers, you have to have a network, you have to have a structured cabling, you have to have your memory, you have to have your backup plans, you have to have your uh, lot of things, right? So you have to have all that. Then, when you have all these services, at one point you realize if you want to get full use out of it, right? Full use of out of it. I say, now assume that you have a computer which has a processor, but if you look at the processor, most of the time you're using only 10% of the processor power. Right? I'm using a MacBook. Um, not sure. I, let me see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, I'm getting my terminal. Oops. Right. Okay. If I do a top, um, my machine is so slow. Uh, okay. 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 So. Now see if my CPU usage at this particular moment I'm running some services I'm downloading something I'm recording this video because of that it's running on 46 percent right uh, yeah, yeah so but still the load averages are very low right so see so it doesn't do much of usage right uh, so your CPU is basically, your brain is sort of doing nothing, right? So that's the reason, that's the real reason why in the world you have to run virtualization. You do run a virtualized machine, you allocate that machine to some other processor, 
resources, right? So then your CPU works full time. Uh, it's like you don't use your brain and you die. So stupid, no? Use your brain, uh, be enlightened. That's what you should do, right? So, uh, yeah. So if you use virtualization, it's good. You know, again, it's just some you know, good concept. You know, using okay, uh, right? Virtualization. Okay. Um, so, so that's one of the reasons virtualization was really useful. And then the other problems of uh, operating system transparency. You are not really worried about what the hell you are running in bottom. You mean in the bottom in the sense in your servers, right? They are bottom, right? You can run whatever you want on the top. So that's the reality of virtual, right? So the virtualization applications, uh, infrastructure like the so VMware, virtual box, those are things that you know, but uh, in, in, in more inter enterprise uh, uh, setup, you have uh, hypervisors, different type of hypervisors which are available. All right, so once you have virtualization, then you can run any other application software on it. All right, when you have this setup, this nice setup, and that is where you can run some other Manage service provisions like cloud infrastructure management and service creation tool all these things you can run on top of that and which can provide The cloud services, so this is how it grew, right? So you need to have physical infrastructure that number one then virtual infrastructure and then the applications and the cloud infrastructure tools We have all these four you can provide cloud services so that's basically how it works, right? If you want to build up this cloud infrastructure, all these things are essential, right? So missing one of those, you don't have a cloud, right? So uh, try to understand, uh, if you want to run your own cloud, you have to have all this. So if you don't have some of them, you can't run your own cloud. So rather you go and find a provider who provides all these things. All right, sorry, uh, okay. Understand your existing, uh, right, sorry. Right, so understand your existing infrastructure. Maybe you are just having this one. So then you have to, uh, of course, have virtualization implemented. Then you have to have application software. Then you have to use this one. Right, so of course, there are open source or paid version of this cloud infrastructure. So you can, of course, get AWS's infrastructure on this. But you can have, there are so many other infrastructures, management tools, which you can install on top of that. Then you can even run a cloud company. Right, okay. So you have a virtualization, so virtualization enables. So virtualization is the key technology here, right? So there are a few key technologies, but I believe uh, virtualization would be one of the main key technologies, right? So just forget about no virtualization. Okay, things get, you know, dumped pretty quickly, right? So it helps resource pooling and also rapid elasticity so virtualization have all these facilities to do pooling elasticity and management orchestration mind you anything devops everything can be done these days uh, continuous integration all these things right all right deploy service management tools deliver cloud so this is the service management tools so which manages all the other things all right uh, okay hope it's clear to you so to this cloud service management tools, uh, CIMSCT, you can do service provisioning and on-demand self-service. So you can do that and also facility, facilitate measured services, whatever you use, get billed, right? All right, so now uh, to go there, you have to start here. So you have to start with classic uh, data center. All right, so uh, so when you look at this particular setup, this is called the classic data center. So you don't have virtualization, you don't have cloud infrastructure, you don't have any other application. So it's like you have your computer at home, there you have your operating system, that's all. So no management of any other thing. So, uh, so you have to have all these other elements, compute element, that's your CPU, storage element, that's your hard disk network, that is your network card application, that is your operating system, and if you have in databases, so basically this is what you mean by a classic data center, right? So of course remember you need to have this classic data center even you talk about the AWS cloud 
or Azure Cloud, right? So you need to have this, you know, otherwise, but the way how this structured can be quite different, right? So you guys can watch a video, uh, right? So if you watch a video, I'm probably, uh, yeah, I, I will probably, uh, yeah, I will probably host it and I will give the link to you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so about Facebook data center, right? And also Google data center. I think uh, those can be quite interesting. Uh, videos to watch. So I, I'm going to, I'm not going to run this right now. Normally in a lecture time, I'll be running the video and I'm explaining, but I don't want that to happen because uh, one thing is I'm putting this into YouTube, so I don't want to get copyrights issues but uh, the other thing is uh, you're just wasting your bandwidth so i will just only concern about the lecture content later i'll put a link where you can watch it so, but please do watch it uh, because that can be quite interesting right. facebook data center and also google data center now you can talk look at aws data center i, I put all these videos right so i think it will be useful Alright, so, so I'll share the video to watch. So you, like I told, you have all these options, right? Um, okay, now uh, when you want to go to the next step in your journey to the cloud, uh, the next important step would be to set up your virtualization. So as I explained earlier, virtualization is basically uh, uh, setting up a uh, separate layer of computing on top of whatever the operating system or the uh, server hardware that you have so uh, normally this is called a hypervisor so hypervisor would be uh, able to convert whatever coming in from the top to the uh, format where uh, whatever resides in the bin to understand so that's basically the structure of it right uh, virtualization is a technique abstract is abstract layer uh, physical resources making them appear as logical resources so for whoever is looking from the top they will understand everything as a logical resource right? so it doesn't see it as a physical resource but virtualization may be implemented at compute so you can do this for compute processing storage so you have probably heard about this f3 buckets and things like that networking so you can uh, virtualized networks also that's another interesting aspect of it nice and then uh, you get virtualized data centers and the benefits would be optimizers utilization of IT infrastructure I told you you can utilize things better reduces the cost right and reduces deployment time increases flexibility so those are uh, the uh, valuable uh, things uh, from from virtualization right, moving on and then uh, like I told you on top of everything you have to set up the service management tools so service management tools help to create deliver cloud services to get that uh, service request measured services to do all these things you have to uh, use this uh, service management tools all right okay um, okay moving on so uh, journey to the cloud is a phased approach so that you have to understand very clearly so it goes step by step so you cannot do that uh, in a short time in the sense like you know you can you can't do it like then and there so it takes a bit of a time to do that right mm. all right so uh, initially uh, uh, you have have the uh, classic data center so once you have the classic data center you have the uh, bare metals then you can on top of that you can in, uh, implement the virtualized infrastructure you can set up the hypervisors and on top of that you can virtualize storage networking and things like that and then you can install the apps and cloud uh, management tools so then you are ready to go cloud all right so that's basically uh, uh, that's basically uh, the, the basics of cloud journey so 
in the next one we'll talk about uh, these components separately all right okay